So welcome to the Global Math Department. My name is Lee Natero, and I'll be your host tonight. Tonight, we're going to be hearing from Howie Wa. Before we begin our session, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about the Global Math Department. The Global Math Department is an organization that is run entirely by volunteers. We have been leading free math PD webinars since 2012. And sadly, the Global Math Department will be closing up shop at the end of this season. And tonight's session is our final webinar. But before I turn the session over to our presenter, I'd like to explain how our webinars work. Our webinars are recorded and are available about 24 hours after the meeting ends. To view the recording, you can use the same link you used to get here tonight. The Global Math Department community prides itself on being friendly and supportive. The chat room is available for topical and general conversation throughout the meeting. And if the chatter gets busy, I'll be sure to catch your questions for the presenter to be addressed at the end of the presentation. If you haven't already done so, please be sure to introduce yourself in the chat, telling us what you teach, where you teach, and what your Twitter handle is, if you have one. Our webinar speaker is Howie Wa, and Howie will be, pre be presenting on the topic, Finding the Joy in Math. Howie Wa is a math instructor at Fresno State, uh, and he teaches math to future elementary school teachers. He is passionate about finding ways to humanize the math classroom, listening to how students think about math, and building mathematical confidence in his students. In 2019, Howie was named Outstanding Lecturer for the College of Science and Math at Fresno State. Outside of school, Howie likes to play piano, go on walks, make math memes, and make math explainer videos. And I'll be posting a link here in the chat um, that you might want to um, hope that you might want to copy uh, and click on for yourself because we will be uh, accessing that document tonight. And so now I'll turn it over to Howie. Emily, thank you so much. It is a huge honor to be um, the last presenter here for Global Math Department. So that is amazing. Hi, Michelle. Thank you for being here. Uh, first, thank you everyone for being here. Um, your time means a lot, so I really hope you get uh, what you need in this presentation. So um, like Lee said, I'm a math instructor at Fresno State where I teach math to future elementary school teachers. You can find me on Twitter and on TikTok at Howie underscore Wah. So I wanted to talk about finding joy in math. So a lot of us um, are math educators, are math teachers, and there must be some sort of reason why we went into this field. Right. Um, right now, we hear a lot of, I hate math. Oh, I was never really good at math. What's the point of blah, blah, blah. Um, type in the chat. What else do you hear whenever you reveal that you were a math major or you're a math teacher um, or you're affiliated with math? <clears throat> you must be smart. <clears throat> Hi, Jenna. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> I never use math. I hate math. You must be a geek. Uh, I never use the math I had to learn. A lot of negative connotations. There's also like shirts that says like math stands for mental abuse to humans. Um, so a lot of uh, negatives whenever we talk about math. So how do we find joy in math? I see a lot of um, comments in the chat, like I'm not a math person. Uh, I'm not good at math, time to multiplication tasks where math is not my thing. I could never do that. So how do we find joy in math in ourselves and how do we uh, show that to students? So a lot of this is for us. Um, how do we find joy in math? And then um, a part of it is also to find joy for, for students to find joy in math. So this is the first meme that I show to my students. Um, I ask them, which frame are they? Are they frame one, two, three, or four? And I see a lot of ones at the very beginning saying like, get that thing out of my face. Um, there are some that have four fingers up already. Um, I'm like, okay, well, if, you're, if you uh, put one finger up, hopefully uh, you're at uh, frame three by the end of the course where you're at least pondering um, whether you like math or not. So that is mainly my goal as a math teacher. Also, you might be um, like this, where you're talking about math and Elmo is everyone else, uh, where they're like, uh, what are they talking about? So how do we get them to look like this, where me talking about math and everyone? Uh, 
By the way, I know that um, it can be pretty silent. So put some like LOLs or like the crying emoji face. Um, if whenever I'm showing memes, I'll show it uh, maybe halfway through the um, halfway through the presentation of more of my memes. So it's not awkward. So in this talk, uh, we will. <laughs> Wow, I didn't know that they pop up like that. Okay, thank you. So in this talk, I'll be uh, I'll be talking about finding joy in um, certain aspects of math, and then we are going to share in our community slides. Um, so I see that some of you are already on there. I see 30, 34 people already on there. So I see that people are already um, putting their names or their social media handles on there. So if you could just grab a slide, uh, there are three uh, columns. And throughout this session, I will tell you um, what to put in what column, just so we have this community feel, we can see each other's responses, and we can keep these uh, after this uh, presentation. So let's just start on the slides. So on the leftmost column, uh, type in your favorite mathematical memory. I'll give you two minutes. So when someone asks you what your favorite mathematical memory is, um, Please share your response on the leftmost box. So hopefully you're not writing on someone else's. Write your name on the top so you can claim that slide. And I'll be silent for two minutes as you write your favorite mathematical memory. I see more people coming in. Hi, Bobson. Hi, Mary. Hi, Christine. Hi, Shafiq. And I'll read these, but I won't say your name just for privacy purposes. Um, but I'll say like someone wrote. Someone wrote learning about Mayan numerals and how to do arithmetic with them. Doing puzzles from games magazine with my dad as a kid. The sieve of Eratosthenes, that is fun. I remember being the second grade subtraction queen. playing cards with my grandmother. When the students finally make the connection to what we have been working on, and you can see the light bulb going off, that's great. Air hockey and math and physics lesson, awesome. coming out of brain surgery and being able to say the quadratic formula in the recovery room. Ooh, <clears throat> infinite, infinite sums. reviewing for a final exam in algebra. I had a true aha moment for how decimals worked in multiplication and division. Truly a light bulb moment. Great, thank you. I'll give you about 20 seconds to finish. You can still continue. Um, I'll just continue the presentation, but you can continue later. Reaching algebra one and finally having math make sense. Learning integers. All the card games at the lake with my grandparents. That's great. Dice auction. I've heard of that on Twitter. Um, I should try it out. Great. Great. 
Great, thank you so much for sharing. So math is the study of patterns. So I think that it's very cool to find joy in the beauty of patterns. I generally hate the number seven just because it's the divisibility rule or a divisibility rule is pretty difficult to do mentally. Um, I don't like odd numbers. Uh, so, but I cannot deny the beauty of the decimal representation for sevens. I show this to my students um, when talking about patterns. I show one seventh is 0 0.142857 repeating. And I ask them, hmm, well, what do you think two sevenths is? Um, and I tell them that it's 285714 repeating. And I ask them, okay, well, what do you think three sevenths is? And a common um, answer is, five, seven, one, four, two, eight, repeating, because it seems like I'm just going every two digits, but I'm like, hmm, well, three sevens is smaller than half, but 0.571428 repeating is greater than half. So what is another option for us? So I love the beauty of patterns of sevens. And I just made a video of this about an hour ago um, on unit fractions, how unit fractions can always be written as the sum of distinct unit fractions. Um, so like, what patterns do you notice here? Like uh, three times four is 12, four times five is 20, five times six is 30. So uh, one sixth, what can one sixth be written as in terms of a sum of a unit fraction or sum of unit fractions? <clears throat> Great, yeah, so one sixth can be written as one seventh plus one over 42. Yep, awesome, awesome, good job, Norma. So what mathematical pattern do you appreciate? There are so many patterns in math. Math is a study of patterns, so type in the chat, uh, what's a mathematical pattern that you appreciate? Nines, like the decimal representation of nines or multiples of nine. Oh, the multiples of nine, yeah. How it works with the fingers, uh, triangular numbers, twos, squaring numbers that end in five. That's one of my favorite tricks. Uh, Sierpinski's triangle, tessellations, negative exponents, elevenths is another fun one. Fives and nines. All right, math is this dividing by 91. I don't know about that one. I'll have to figure that, figure that out. Fibonacci, great, awesome. So math is the study of patterns. So I think it's really cool to find joy in the beauty of patterns. Um, here's my answer to a pretty common question of what is the point of math class? What's the point of education when everything is online? Because that's something that teachers have to think about because how do we differentiate ourselves so we cannot be replaced by videos or just watching a whole bunch of videos online? So for me, my answer would be the four C's, communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. Um, you can watch videos to learn math. Um, trust me, like I make videos all the time about that. I'm not saying that no one can learn um, by watch, just watching videos, but what's great about the classroom is that we can hit these four C's. Uh, communication, students are talking to each other, uh, communicating their ideas, collaboration, um, one of the last days of class, just a couple weeks ago, a student said, on the first day, you mentioned someone inviting their group members to their wedding. I didn't believe you then, but I believe you now. And I think that is amazing. I, colla I have collaboration maybe like over half the time um, in each class session. So students get to know each other, even in a semester, um, a two day a week class or three day a week class um, that they get so close that they invite each other to their weddings. Uh, critical thinking, videos, you can say pause the video as much as you want, but we're giving them time to think. Um, if anyone wants to know how, um, what goes on in my head when I'm teaching, literally 95% of it is give them more time to think. Just me telling that my, to myself all the time, give them more time to think. Um, so yeah, and creativity. Today is actually the National um, National Creativity Day. So um, 
how do we show that math is a creative subject and not just follow what the teacher does? So if anyone wants to know my response to like, what's the point of math class? I always go back to the four C's. <clears throat> um, one problem solving activity that I do with my students is from math equals love on Twitter, which is make six. Uh, we don't have time to do that right now, uh, but students always love it. Eight is always the trickiest one. I give them a little hint for that, um, but it's a great one to do early on. Um, students can try things, a lot of trial and error, um, and just verifying that their answers are correct. So strongly recommend that one. There's also joy in, uh, there's also finding joy in understanding. I know this is probably, I know for sure that this is online, but I didn't look it up online. I said, I want to figure it out on my own why the slope of opposite or why the slope of perpendicular lines are opposite reciprocals of each other. And I tried it out um, and I realized that, wow, I actually did it. I did it without looking it up, um, why perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals of each other. So take a look at this picture um, for about 45 seconds. Can you figure out how these slopes have, um, how these lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals of each other? So I'll be silent for about 45 seconds. All right, so Far sees uh, the Pythagorean theorem proof. If we connect uh, the vertices of those two triangles, we get a um, trapezoid, and that uh, Pythagorean theorem proof was made by, was originated by uh, President Garfield five years before his presidency. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, so yes, so yes, Michelle's talking about rise over run. So uh, the rise of the line going this way is uh, A over B, and the line going this way, uh, the slope is negative B over A, and look, opposite reciprocals of each other. And Lee is saying that the non-right angles are complementary to each other in both triangles, so we have that right angle over there. So we can show that uh, perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals of each other. Hi, Allison, it's great to see you here. <clears throat> Um, this is also one that I literally uh, thought of like a month ago. Like I said, it's probably on there, but I probably online, but I didn't look it up. I just uh, wanted to problem solve myself of visualizing why keep change flip works. So how can we visualize that eight divided by two thirds is equivalent to eight times three halves? Well, we can think about the partitive model of division, which says, hmm, if two thirds of something is worth eight, what's the whole worth? So if two thirds of something is worth eight, well, that means each of these sections are worth four. That means the last section is worth four. So the total is 12. So I know that eight divided by two thirds is 12. Yeah, I personally don't say keep change flip, but I know that it's more like generally known. I try never to, I I don't know, in my decade of teaching, I've never said keep change flip, but I know that it's just like the more common language here. So what we did was we wanted half of eight and then multiplied by three, right? So we took half of eight and then we multiplied that by three to get the whole, which is equivalent to eight times three halves. So we just showed that eight divided by two thirds is equivalent to eight times three halves. So Try this out with six divided by three fourths or half divided by three fourths or whatever you want to try. So if you have pen and paper in front of you, um, I'll be silent for about a minute um, for you to try this out. So visualizing that six divided by three fourths is equivalent to six times four thirds or that half divided by three fourths is equivalent to half times four thirds.
So in both of these, we can see that we're dividing that number by three. So that's why three is in the denominator. And then we multiply by four uh, because we want four of those sections. So um, that is how we can visually show that uh, six divided by three fourths is equivalent to six times four thirds or half divided by three fourths is equivalent to half times four thirds. Um, we can show this algebraically by doing uh, complex fractions and identity property. Um, someone asked me how to do it visually, and there we go. Yes, common denominators is another way to do that as well. Yeah. So there's also finding joy in listening to other people's thinking. One of my strengths as a teacher is that I'm a very curious person. Um, so whenever I go into the classroom, I'm always curious in how other people think. So this was a picture taken um, in Morro Bay. And I, want, I wonder, how did you count the squares? So how many of those square tiles are there in this picture? And please type it in the chat. <clears throat> yes. Um, Email me the, or you can feel free to email me. My email is um, on the very last slide, and I will be more than happy to share my slides. So nine plus nine plus seven. Another nine plus nine plus seven. Uh, Michelle and Jackie, can you share how you got nine plus nine plus seven? I don't see it right now. I think I see it. Um, just confirm with me how you saw it. Counted in groups of three, then added the center tile. That's that is a that is a great one. Doubled the equivalent rows, then added in seven. Uh, three groups of five, two groups of three, and four. Four plus twelve plus nine. Nine in the middle, plus three times four around the sides, plus one group of four. OK, I see that. So the square, and then the four groups of three, and then the ones, group the eights, and then had one extra. In the center, there are there's a five by three, mm -hmm. and then one on each end, and then four on top and bottom. That's great. Oh, I think I did it uh, rotated 90 degrees. Great. I posted this on TikTok once, and one person wrote, um, the ones on the very top, bottom, left, and right, they just moved them to the corners to make a five by five grid. And I was like, how did I not see that, right? So they just kind of formed it into a square. Um, that blew my mind. So that was pretty amazing to just like move them around to just make a five by five square. Here's another one um, that got a lot of traction, uh, just simply asking <laughs> how to do 17 plus 18. Um, I think that student ideas are gifts because you obviously didn't know how they thought of it. So whenever people share, whenever students share, I just think of it as a gift um, because they are. Over here, uh, Dan Povenmire, the co-creator of Phineas and Ferb, commented how he thought. So I thought that that was really amazing. I'm like, wow, I know how Dan Povenmire thinks about 17 plus 18. Um, Hank Green stitched my video of how he would do 17 plus 18. So I'm like, wow, I now know how Hank Green thinks about 17 plus 18. Um, so once again, um, just finding joy in listening to other people's thinking is a huge gift. And I never take that for granted. Can you type in the chat how you would mentally calculate 17 plus 18? <clears throat> Great, 17 plus 17 plus 1, 15 plus 10 plus 10. Uh, multiplication here, 18 times 2 minus 1. 7 plus 8 plus 10 plus 10. 10 plus 10 plus 8 plus 2 plus 5. 15 plus 15 plus 5. Great, awesome. Sorry, I didn't. Um, I was 
looking at the chat, I'm like, no one's commenting 17 plus 18, but I didn't realize that my uh, chat was stopped. And then I had to scroll down to see that people are actually commenting. Great, awesome. Great. And finding joy in listening to other people's thinking. Um, a lot of these are amazing. All of these are amazing to do in your classrooms, just because a lot of these, basically all of these are just involving or just listening to how other people think, right? It's a little more student-centered. So if you want to get a, give a shout out to one of these or something else um, that I didn't uh, mention here, uh, feel free to do it in the chat. What uh, math strategy or math, um, uh, I can't think of the word, but what math strategy uh, or routine uh, do you have a shout out for? Um, for me, estimation 180 is always amazing. I show the one where it's uh, how many of these smaller vases fit into the larger vase by pouring water. And then like, I have never had that much engagement in my class where everyone's just staring at the screen, anticipating what the final answer is. Um, I totally agree. Would you rather is amazing. Um, I've done a couple of videos on that of how I turned my most boring math lesson, which is unit conversions to my best one because it's just so engaging. Like, would you rather drive uh, 100 feet per second or 50 miles per hour, which one's faster? Um, something that students can relate to is, would you rather, you have an essay due tomorrow, a 2000 word essay. Would you rather type a thousand word in, thousand words an hour or 30 words a minute? Um, those are always amazing. Um, React tasks, Esta mysteries. Oh yeah, um, Steve Wyborny, I believe. Great number talks. I can't believe I forgot to put that. Between two numbers as well. Splat is one that I show for algebra, exploding dots, solve me mobile, mobiles. All of these are great. Yep. So I went to Europe in 2016 and before um, I went, my friend told me, you're going to see a lot of street musicians buy their CDs. So when you come back and you listen to them, you are immediately brought back to that place. So I asked myself, why not do that with math, right? So here are a couple pictures that bring me back to different places. This was on my birthday five years ago uh, in Eureka, California. And I'm like, here's a hyperbola in the wild, right? Like, what are the chances that you just see hyperbolas just out um, outside of the math classroom? Uh, this was when I was volunteering for the Fresno State Marching Band, and I thought this would be a good number talk of how many bottles you see and how did you count. This was at the Fresno Fair last year. Um, I think these are great uh, number talks as well. Um, there are around 70 stray cats on Fresno State's campus, and I thought that um, this was funny, just uh, 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 three cats just in a right triangle. <clears throat> Lee says, anytime there's a tiled floor, I have to take pictures for my math files. And Norma says, hashtag math photo 23 and all past years, great to follow. Um, this was also at Fresno State and this is my favorite dot talk just because there are so many different ways of counting these dots. Um, one that shocked me was that someone saw a butterfly. So they saw four and then a uh, six and six as the wings. So that's why this is one of my favorites. Um, this is actually my first mathematical activity that I do with my students. How many did? How many do you see and how did you count? To show that if we just focused on the final answer, we lose out on the beauty of math. Um, because I said, how many did you see? And they all said 16. I'm like, great. If I did say, okay, since we all got the same answer, let's move on. We move, lose out on all of the cool ways um, that we count these dots. Because something that's obvious to us might not be obvious to someone else. Uh, this was taken at a Fresno Jamba Juice. I have no um, sentimental value with Jamba Juice. I, uh, you can find this in a lot of bathrooms. Um, but I thought it still brings me back to the Jamba Juice at, um, in Fresno. This was in Asheville, North Carolina. I thought this would be a good one to bring back to the classroom as well. Uh, this is in Wisconsin. Uh, Nick Johnson, you probably uh, are familiar with this place now. Um, ask students how many holes you see, 
how did you count? And the staircase, I can say, how many different ways can we go up the stairs? Like one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one, or like two plus two plus two, or one plus two plus uh, one plus two plus, uh, yeah, that's it, one plus two plus one plus two, and so forth. Um, this was on my way to CMC South. I thought it was really interesting that the pylons had different um, polygons as bases. You have hexagon, you have a hexagon on the left and an octagon on the right. So I thought that was interesting. And there was a pie in the sky. Um, if you can see the pie symbol, um, I thought that was really cool. That was in Mendocino uh, six years ago. So a lot of these are just personal. Not everyone knows the stories behind it, but I do. Um, and that's really special um, to bring back into the classroom saying like, this is what I found um, over the weekend. This is where I, what I found across the country and all of that. So I already told you this, my friend told me you're going to see a lot of street musicians buy their CDs. So when you listen to them, you'll be brought back to that place. So why not do this with math? My friend told me you're going to see a lot of math take pictures so when you see them you'll be brought back to that place and that's what helps me bring uh, math joy into the classroom and math joy for myself as well jackie has a great question of why hexagon and octagon i wonder mm -hmm. finding joy in doing something that first seemed difficult um, but now seems easy we're not we don't have enough time to do this one um, but this is one of the first problems that i give to my third level students uh, I think this, this is on the second day of class. So there was a jar of cookies on the table. Gabby was hungry, so she ate half the cookies. Then Castro ate a third of what was left in the jar. Asia came by and decided to take a fourth of the remaining cookies with her to her next class. Then Hua came up and took a cookie to munch on. When Megan looked at the cookie jar, she saw that there were two cookies left. How many cookies were there in the jar to begin with? She asked. So students, I give them around 15 minutes to work by themselves and together. Um, and the whole point of this is that visualizing make th makes things a lot easier. So if we visualize it, it makes it a lot easier. So I tell them to draw a box. I said, Gabby ate half the cookies. Then Castro ate a third of the remaining. Then Asia ate a fourth of the remaining. And then Hua took one cookie and there were two cookies left afterward. So that means there are three cookies right there. So knowing this, what's the answer? Type it in the chat. How many cookies were there in the jar to begin with? Yep, so Lee said 12, Michelle, everyone, uh, four people, five people. Hi, Tracy. Nice to see you. A lot of people said 12. Yep. So um, the whole point of this is to show that visualizations can definitely make math easier. Another one, um, I think that algebra is totally, uh, there's so much untapped potential in algebra in making algebra super fun because algebra is so connected with mental math. Um, for example, uh, we can use math to make things easier for us. Uh, for example, 534 squared minus 533 squared is just a difference of squares. So we can do this mentally. We don't have to say, what is 534 squared? And then type in the calculator, what's 533 squared? And then subtract them. Yep, Gabriella says difference of two squares. So yeah. So just showing students that, hey, what we are learning in algebra class can make things so much easier for us in terms of mental math. Here's another one that is based on algebra. Um, 50 squared is 2,500. We don't have to start from scratch with 51 squared. We could just double the base and add one because of algebra, right? So 51 squared, um, we can do it mentally. It's 2,601 because it's just n plus one quantity squared. So that's why we start with that, sorry, start with that square, add twice the base, and add one. And we can do something similar with uh, 49 squared. So like n minus one quantity squared, subtract twice the base and add one. So um, if this is new to you, 
Uh, take 30 seconds and try this out. So I'll be silent for about 30 seconds. Relate to Pythagorean uh, theorem when they actually uh, do the difference of two squares. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's great. I did this with ninth through 11th graders in Chicago, and uh, they were really amazed by this one um, of just like, oh, I can totally calculate 21 squared in my head. I can calculate 36 squared in my head. So um, it's really cool to show them uh, the reason why these tricks work. So Google Slides time. So right in the middle box, what brings you joy when doing math? So a lot of it was just um, what brings me joy? What brings you joy in doing math? And put that in your middle box. I know that people came in um, later after our first um, our first column. Uh, Lee, can you thank you so much? Uh, I think that might be the wrong one, um, the wrong link. Yes. Oh. Yes, that's the wrong link. Don't don't yeah. click on that link. It'll take you to a Zoom meeting that isn't happening. Yeah. So um, for those that came in um, a little later, uh, grab a slide. Um, grab a slide to the link that's going to be posted very soon. Um, that is not touched yet. And in the middle, in the middle column, uh, write down what brings you joy when doing math. And I won't reveal your name. I may share um, what people are writing, but I won't say your name for privacy reasons uh, for those that are watching the recording. Finding an elegant approach to a problem, especially after my first solution was brute force algebra or another method, even better if it comes from a student. Patterns of math. Learning about how people see or do a problem differently. Making math seem magical and wonderful with math tricks. When I find useful ways to apply math outside of the classroom, Oh gosh, what brings me joy as a learner is being fully immersed in a puzzle like Ken Ken. What brings me joy as a teacher is when I see my students doing the same, when they are completely immersed in problem solving that they never have to say, when are we ever going to use this? Yeah, another um, response to that of like, when are we ever going to use this? Um, I think that um, math, for the sake of math is just a beautiful thing. Like I'm never going to have to be forced to write a unit fraction as a sum of distinct unit fractions, but it's just cool, like an art. Um, we don't say that about all of the other subjects. Like when am I ever going to write a poem? When am I ever going to um, be timed on how many push-ups I can do in a in a minute or something like that? I have a rap for negative b over 2a. What brings me joy is when I can make up a song, rhyme, or other connection. Connections between different representations. Prime climb digits from New York Times. Any math games I can play with my own uh, children or students. Let's take about uh, 20 more seconds here. Um, puzzles, numbers, also word patterns. Realizing it really is more than memorizing procedures. Yep. Um, I'll be honest in that even throughout my bachelor's degree, 
I thought that to be good at math, I just needed to memorize formulas, theorems, and definitions. And I got my math degree purely through that. And I remember on graduation day, I felt so bad because I was wearing my cap and gown and I felt guilty because I'm like, I have nothing to show for this because all I did was just memorize for a class and then just forgot everything um, shortly after the class was over. I'm like, I'm yes, I technically did graduate, but it's like, I have nothing to show for it. So if I had to go through college again, I definitely would talk about more about connections and looking deeper into why things work. Great. Now, this is something that um, I can definitely be better at. Um, I'm not perfect with this. Words do matter when uh, creating a joyful classroom. How can we make math class a positive learning experience? Because it's very easy to say like, oh, like, um, this is wrong, do this again, um, we need to do it this way, all of that. So what are some words or phrases that you say that help um, that help make it more, more of a positive experience? So if you have something uh, that can help uh, people in the chat, that'd be amazing because I am not perfect at this. Yet is a great one. Um, whenever students say, I don't know, I say, don't forget that last word, yet, I don't know yet. And then uh, students actually um, continue that throughout the semester. So um, I'm pretty proud of that. What questions do you have instead of, do you have any questions? Yes. Oh, that's the answer to a different questions. I never tell students they are wrong. What questions can I answer? Yeah, I say, um, I say ask me at least two questions because questions don't mean that like, hey, can you repeat something? It can be extension questions as well. And sometimes they need time to think about those. Um, so I say ask me at least two questions. And one of the most important things is that you do not give in to silence because if you do, students will just realize, oh yeah, just have to be quiet for 10 seconds and then they'll just keep going. Um, one other thing that I say is I do not say the word you when it's a critique because you, I learned in communications class in college that you is the most powerful word. Like you did this wrong. You didn't do this right. You, whatever. But it can be used for good as well. Like you did a really great job. You are amazing. You artic um, you explained that very well. So whenever it's something that can be seen as negative, I just focus on the work rather than focus on the person. Um, so I avoid the word you, um, so it doesn't seem personal. So yeah, I love all of these comments. Great. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, if I learned anything from uh, Dan Finkel is that uh, if you don't know what to do, turn it into a game. Um, so um, how do we make math playful? Um, one of my students' favorite games is Got It by Tom Jolly, where you just create a six by six grid. And your goal is just to make a train um, that equals that number. So make six, you can look at like one plus five. So as long as they're connected in some sort of way, going left, right, up and down, you can make it as long as you want. Um, like one plus five, two plus four. Um, let's see if I can make a longer one. Hmm. Can we make a longer one that's not just three things, three cards? Nine. Oh, okay. So like 11 minus two minus three, right? So you could use as many cards as you want. Um, the original game is that whoever says it first gets the card, gets a point. Um, but I like to slow it down and say, let's find at least two different ways. And uh, it never stops at two. It sometimes goes to seven to nine to 10 different ways of doing it because students say got it and they want to share. So I um, strongly recommend this game. Um, it is not a Howie Wah um, presentation without showing my math memes. Um, so here are a couple. You can put some emojis so it's not awkward for the next three minutes. Um, 
SpongeBob memes are always my go-to of like subtracting uh, through borrowing versus uh, subtracting one from both numbers, same distance, same difference. Um, Tom and Jerry memes of just like counting up versus um, subtracting uh, right to left. Oh, of course. Thank you so much for liking it. Um, whenever students uh, forget their units. Great. Yes, uh, I see that, Beth, you're raising your hand. You could uh, just type your question in. I don't think that um, voice is allowed from participants, so you could just type it. Uh, me when I make a mistake versus me when students make a mistake. Um, I'm very forgiving uh, when uh, students make a mistake. It's like, okay, you're learning. But when I make a mistake, um, I'm so harsh on myself. Uh, you, if you have been online for literally a second, you know that um, meme or that uh, systems of linear equations work so much better online on social media if you replace them with emojis. This is my most famous one, um, just breaking apart or factoring quadratics. <clears throat> um, my best explanation of parallel lines, uh, the age I consider old and my age, right? When you're 15, you think 30 is old. And when you're 30, you think 45 is old and so forth. Thought that's funny. Um, gathering like terms. I thought this was cute. A universe. This is my second meme that I share with my students. I ask them, where are they in this picture? Are you in the play area where it's a universe of math exploration or are you memorizing formulas? And students say like, I'm totally in the other room. And then I bring it back um, at the very end of the semester saying, okay, where are you now? And they're like, I'm on the first level of the play area or like, I'm at least out of the box. Great. Jokes about the distributive property aren't funny unless everyone gets it. I'm pretty proud of that one. Uh, 10 haunting photos taken moments before disaster. And guess who is a math person? All right, so let's do, um, sorry. So I want to end, we only have seven minutes left. So I want to share um, some math stories with you because I know that it's not common for students to like come back to say like, hey, you helped me become a teacher. Um, so I just want to share some math stories since um, I do teach math to future elementary school teachers. So someone said, my favorite math story would be when I was a junior in high school and I had the most amazing algebra teacher ever. He was kind, compassionate, and would always motivate me when I would get frustrated with math. He honestly taught me to love math in a way, changed my thinking perspective, and motivated me to take pre-calc my senior year of high school. Someone else said, my favorite math memory will have to be when I first learned how to multiply double-digit numbers. This was in the fourth grade. Honestly, it just felt very good, and my teacher at that time really complimented me with that and made it a hundred times better. So these are college students, and they still remember their fourth grade teacher and that they complimented um, this student, right? So finding joy in knowing that you make a difference. I also, I also asked students why they want to be a teacher. So here are um, three of the responses. I want to become a teacher because when I was in second grade, my teacher was always very helpful and would always do everything for her students. I remember telling myself how I wanted to be just like her one day. When I think back to when I was in elementary school, I could on find only pleasant and fond memories of my teachers that made my years fun and enjoyable. That is why I want to teach to play a part in nurturing future generations. And one more, I am so grateful to have the opportunity to get my liberal studies degree and do what I love best, helping children reach their fullest potential. My biggest inspiration was my fourth grade teacher and without his encouragement, I would not be here today. So I want you to remember that even though um, they don't say it, I know that uh, you make a difference. So um, definitely smile because you definitely do make a difference. I randomly looked at my elementary school's website, summer 2021, and I saw that my kindergarten teacher was still teaching there. So I decided to email her saying like, hi, Mrs. Vargas, I don't know if you remember me, I was in your kindergarten class in 1996. Um, and I still remember in, um, during morning stations where we were on the carpet, we were rolling dice to grab base 10 blocks and uh, we exchanged 
uh, 10 ones for a 10, 10 tens for a 100. And our goal was always to get that thousand cube. So um, I still remember that um, decades later. And she emailed back two hours later. Uh, she called me Howard because I went by Howard at that time. So she still remembered that. And she still remembered my sister and my parents. Um, and that was like 25 years later. Um, so it, it's just a reminder that teachers have the greatest hearts. Um, and here is me um, when I graduated, not graduated, but like was promoted from kindergarten in 1997. And that is Mrs. Vargas right there. Um, so in your last um, column, can you type who helped you love math and how did they help you love math? So write your response in the rightmost box. <clears throat> And uh, while we are doing that, a couple days ago, I um, recorded this song just because I'm a very sentimental person. Um, so we are going to uh, type this um, while I play Auld Lang Syne on piano. <clears throat> All right. So uh, right now we have a lot of people's math stories, uh, your favorite mathematical memory, what brings you joy when doing math, and who helped you love math, and we can continue with this. Um, so uh, feel free to read this. I'll close, I'll make it view only so um, it's not tampered with um, shortly after this presentation. Um, but yeah, remember that uh, we, we, are here for a reason. We majored in math. We are math educators for some sort of reason. And hopefully it's to help other people find the joy in math, right? So I want you to text yourself one thing that you'll take from this session. Um, whenever I do professional development or whenever I do sessions, um, it's nice to just text yourself. I text myself maybe like 10 times a day just so I don't forget things. Um, so if you wanna make things actionable, take a couple seconds. What's one thing you'll take from this session? Whether it's making your own math story, um, maybe one of the visuals helped, um, maybe something in the chat helped with how to make it a more positive experience.
And yeah, so I want to end with this. How many teachers does it take to do a subtraction problem? One, because it only takes one teacher to make a difference. Um, I want to thank you so much to the Global Math uh, Department for allowing me to be your very last presenter. And I want you to thank, I want to thank all of you for being here. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Howie. Um, that was amazing. Um, and I'm definitely going to have to go back and take a look at the community slides. And I really like using the community slides as a way to have people share. So I'm definitely going to be looking to do that with my students. So I know there's been so much love shared in the chat about the Global Math Department. And many of you might be already missing the Global Math Department already, even though we only finished less than 30 seconds ago. Um, and so I wanted to mention that there's a new and exciting collaboration that's um, being led by Shafiq Welji, who is currently teaching pre-service mathematics teachers at the University of Georgia. He previously taught high school mathematics in the Gwinnett County Public Schools. And so he is starting a new initiative this fall called the Global Math Professional Learning Community. And in this online group, you can choose topics for professional development that interests you. And you uh, will help you find other groups of math teachers who share similar interests. And there is a hyperlink right there at the top of the chat. Um, I'll actually um, also uh, copy it and paste it into the chat. But this is a Google form that you can uh, complete in case this is something that you're interested in. Um, and for those of you that are listening to this um, through the podcast version of this, um, the link is bit.ly forward slash global math PLC. That was bit.ly forward slash global math PLC. And so hopefully we can have several of you join that. Um, it'll be smaller and more intimate than a full global math department session, but it'll be around a topic that would be of interest to you, such as lesson study, working through and trying out techniques like building thinking classrooms, um, equitable teaching practices, or how to facilitate PLCs in your own schools. Uh, further information will be available later this summer and session would start in the fall. So thank you so much. <laughs> this is a great group tonight. Thank you everyone and thank you, Howie.